short and sweet, hopefully. Um, and we are going to um, hear the panel by people that are going to, to share with you different, different approaches to funding um, available um, for innovation and internet development in the, in the, that cover all the, the globe, but especially the, the global south. Um, so to my left, I have Ernesto Majo, uh, which is the manager of external relations and communications of LACNIC, at the regional internet registry for uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, who allocates uh, IP addresses uh, for the Latin American and the Caribbean. Um, then Jens Karberg, the program manager of ICT for Development, private sector collaboration, and ICT department for global cooperation of the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency from the Swedish government. Then um, Cesare Marco Pantini, senior policy counsel at Google in the Belgium offices. And Jennifer Haroun, principal of access at Google uh, as well. Um, so my name is Silvia Cadena. I'm the the coordinator of the ECIF Asia uh, program. We allocate um, grants and awards in the Asia Pacific as part of the Sea Alliance. And um, Ernesto is going to explain about the Sea Alliance in our programs, and I'm just taking care of the time for you guys. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, well, we talked about the Sea Alliance. Sea uh, 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 Alliance is, is, is a, a partnership that we uh, uh, have with uh, our colleagues from uh, the others, in the South uh, areas. Uh, LACNIC uh, is uh, based in Latin America and Caribbean, and APNIC, Asia and Pacifico, and Asia and Pacific, and, uh, and AFNIC uh, covers the, the, the Africa region. So, um, when we decided to, to, to have this alliance, uh, we, we have some uh, independent programs. Uh, Lagni has a, the, his own program in, in, uh, to, to uh, support uh, innovative projects in, in IC, on ICT uh, subject. And Frida program is uh, the name of our program. Frida was, was uh, founded in, in 2004. In fact, I was the the, the best, the best, not the, the first, sorry, and the best, of course, but the first uh, uh, coordinator of that program. And when we created the initiative, was the idea was to uh, to uh, create a bridge between the the research the researchers and uh, the funds. So, uh, Lagni, uh, with uh, the support of uh, IDRC uh, at the beginning of, and immediately uh, the the collaboration of uh, Internet Society, who always has his support. Uh, we create that initiative in order to, to, to give uh, uh, funds for uh, the innovative people in our region. Um, during the, during the, first, uh, uh, the first eight years, um, ju we, we just give uh, uh, funds for uh, new projects. We make calls and uh, we uh, uh, evaluate in a, uh, with, a, with a, uh, the, the, the collaboration of a uh, evaluation committee, independent uh, in, uh, independent uh, consultants that we uh, convoke to, to collaborate with us. And uh, during that time, uh, we just uh, um, give uh, funds for, for new projects. And, and uh, after some some times, we decided to, to create the, the awards. That the, the idea the, the, the awards was to uh, to. Uh, uh, to create a bit, or more, give more visibility for, for the you know, for the, the uh, good initiatives that the, they were developing in our regions, and um, at the same time uh, the, the other uh, re, the other uh, areas were in the, the, in, the, in, the, in the same uh, in, in, in the same situation with his own uh, with, with his own uh, programs, uh, ECI and the fire, and uh, we understood that that, that, that uh, uh, if we uh, create an, a brand, and we create a, a, an um, a umbrella program to cover the, the three regions and the three uh, uh, initiatives. We can uh, help to, to to connect better the the, the ideas with the, with the with the money that they need to to, to develop his, these ideas. So um, during the last two years, uh, three years, 
In the last, during the last three years, we uh, were working uh, together, but uh, in an independent way. Uh, Frida, and Fire, and, and ISIF are independent programs. So we uh, have uh, our uh, we, we, we we take our own decisions in, in, in the, uh, for example, with, with the, the way that the evaluation of the pro the projects, the way that we make the calls, uh, and the. the the subject that we select for, for, for the awards or for the funding. But, uh, oh, but at, at the same time, we uh, uh, work in a coordinated uh, way. We exchange information. We have some uh, common activities. Uh, and of course, we, uh, um, all, of, all of them, we are uh, linked with, with the ICF agenda. Uh, we decided to, to to align our our, pro, our our programs to the IGF agenda, so uh, the, the the awards uh, are linked with with that. So we select one uh, one uh, one award uh, for every uh, main topic of the, the IGF agenda. So um, just to to finish, uh, <coughs> I I want to say that uh, for for us it's a very uh, very good experience. It's, it's not easy because uh, we are three independent companies, independent organizations, uh, with different uh, uh, communities and uh, di different realities. But uh, we are uh, committed commit with, uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, to create a real bridge between the, 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 the researchers and the, the ideas with, the, with the, the funds. And we are uh, trying to do the, the we think that we are a very uh, um, efficient mechanism in order to, to link that. So it's just my, my speech. Thanks. OK. Now to give the floor to Jens Karberg, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm representing SIDA, which is a governmental body and the main, main actor for Swedish uh, aid support to uh, uh, and CEDA is responsible for about 3 billion uh, US dollars each year uh, for this support. Uh, so it enhances uh, uh, great responsibility uh, for, for us when we work with these issues. Uh, I will not just speak about internet but a bit broader of how CEDA works with, with ICT and put up some aspect of how we work and, uh, and some aspect of ICT that I find uh, important to, to look upon. Uh, when when CEDA, CEDA work with ICT, I think three, three main themes uh, that we are coming back to. Uh, the first one would be to, to to work with uh, policies. Uh, the reason for that is that CEDA is uh, a quite small actor. I mean, uh, Sweden is a small country, uh, but, but also it's many other actors uh, in this area. So we need to collaborate with, with others uh, to find ways of good ways of working and find standards of, of how to work, find out the best way of, of uh, working. And that shouldn't be uh, done by us, us alone, but we need to find partners in, in that work. Uh, the second aspect is that we also uh, would like to try and this is an area where we, we are still struggling, I would say, to, to integrate ICT uh, within all uh, the work that, that uh, CEDA does. So, so not just to have specific programs on ICT, but also to, to mainstream it into to our normal business. And uh, I would say that that is a quite hard, hard uh, work to do for an organization like us. We, uh, we have different specialists in, in, in uh, the areas and the topics and, and the regions we are working with.
but we don't have uh, the broad uh, competence when it comes to to both the technical side but also the the aspects of of uh, ICT in the organization and that's why they also need to collaborate with others to to get that experience but also to educate ourselves uh, in that area uh, the last thing I think it's important for our work is to work with innovations uh, innovation in different a aspects both in in how how models for for how we work but also how ICT as a, itself could be could be uh, innovated so we can do new things that wasn't wasn't even possible before uh, and one way of how we work with innovation is is the support we have to to seed alliance uh, to find uh, smaller smaller and local uh, local ways of using ICT in an in uh, innovative uh, way uh, but of course we also working with other ways uh, and here's also collaboration with the private sector uh, different uh, types of research and other things uh, general, uh, if I leave those three things uh, for the way we're working and just mention three aspects of, of ICT that I find important to, to think about when, when uh, funding or, or working with ICT. Uh, the first thing I would say is the sustainability aspect uh, of it. Uh, not just to it's I mean ICT at the moment is it's it's very very fancy in one way uh, and a lot of actors are are willing to to fund new new aspects of how you can use a new technology to to work in a more efficient way but it's much harder to to find sustainable ways of of uh, working with ICT and that is also why I think this with collaboration is uh, Im important to see what other actors do to reuse uh, uh, the experience that other has maybe to 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 change it but but use the experience that already is out there uh, also to find ways of how to scale uh, smaller smaller uh, support or smaller innovations to to reach a bigger scale uh, the second thing would be to look at the context uh, it's it's very very important to to see the context and see how how it's not just to and that has been used in uh, ICT has been used in 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 that sense the wrong aspect in, in many, many many ways where where you take uh, one application or one way of working with ICT and just put it in a new context and uh, of course you 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 have the risk to to not uh, be successful so context it, uh, is important the last thing I would, would mention is uh, to mind the gaps uh, within within ICT uh, uh, Sweden and CEDA is working extensively with with uh, for example uh, women and girls access and use uh, of ICT uh, but we can find many other gaps uh, between uh, countries within countries uh, uh, ex accessibility for disabled people and so on and so forth uh, and these these aspects are, are very important I think and that we should uh, make an effort to work in. I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you. And now we give the floor to Cesare Marco Panzini, Senior Policy Council of Cook. 
Thank you very much. So I'm Marco from the Brussels Policy Team. Uh, I'm, you know, in the short time that we have, I would like to mention a few of the initiatives that we are doing in order to foster entrepreneurship online. Uh, first of all, I would like to start from uh, mentioning our um, Get online, get, get small, uh, medium business online, which was an initiative that we run globally in order to empower a small and medium enterprise that are active, uh, not only in the innovative sector but also in the traditional sector, to know how to use the internet in order to go online and open up to the global, uh, to the global uh, market. And this is an initiative that actually we run in all the, the different region, from Europe to South America to to US to to Africa and Asia. So. And, and we, the, the, the results were, were great from, from a, a lot of different perspectives. Um, uh, other two initiatives that uh, I would like to mention, and then I would leave the, the floor to Jen, you go more deeper into uh, a few of them. One is the Global Impact Award. The Global Impact Award is uh, a way Google has chosen to support entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial non-profit that are using technology to solve uh, big uh, world issue, uh, global issues. Uh, we just finished uh, um, a challenge in the UK and uh, so soon the finalists will be, will be presenting their project to our uh, panel of, of uh, experts and uh, we are running one in India in this moment so if you want you, go, you can go on Global Impact Challenge India, search for Global Impact Challenge India and see the projects that are running for the co this contest and vote, and vote for them. Um, Google is also engaged in the Alliance for Affordable Internet, uh, which is a coalition of private sector, public sector and non-profit organization uh, that are uh, coming together in order to advance uh, the possibility for, uh, for um, uh, developing countries, people living in developing countries to access to broadband and fixed line because we believe access is a, is a very important uh, uh, requisite in order to, to, to not only express your, your fundamental, important fundamental rights like for example the freedom of expression but also to have the opportunity of, of finding, uh, finding a, a way to make, uh, improve your life and start an activity online. I would like also to leave uh, uh, to Jenny to talk about some of the other initiatives that we are doing that I think are very, very important. Thanks, Marco. I'm Jennifer from our Access team um, at Google headquarters in Mountain View. And Marco touched on some of the things we do, but I want to break it down a little bit. Um, as Marco said, when we think about supporting innovation in the Internet ecosystem, we sort of think about it in two ways. One is in bringing access particularly to emerging markets. Um, Marco mentioned our participation in the Alliance for Affordable Internet, where we really focus on enabling um, technology and access through policy change. The second is through actual technology. And there we look at new technologies in-house, such as Project Loon, our supportive TV white space, um, but we also support technology development externally. For instance, we recently funded some researchers at Stanford and Berkeley to uh, develop some network designs based on software divine, defined networking, which we hope will enable the deployment and management of rural wireless networks um, in a much more scalable manner, manner. So that's the bringing access. Um, the second part is then supporting the internet ecosystem. Marco mentioned a few things that we do. Um, we have an organization within Google called Google for Entrepreneurs that supports tech and innovation hubs across the world, um, particularly in emerging markets. Uh, they also hold a lot of training days. Um, those can run the gamut from for students, sometimes they're held for small and medium sized enterprises, uh, for entrepreneurs, and it also, there's also some web content where, where folks can go themselves online and, and do some of the trainings. And we also hold a broader range of contests, um, coding contests, developer contests, marketing contests, um, all in the hopes of supporting the next generation of internet entrepreneurs. Thank you, William. We are happy also to take any questions you may have about this initiative and other things that Google is doing in, in the field of fostering entrepreneurship. Thank you, Marco and Jennifer. Um, well, I took some notes about your uh, presentations and uh, before opening the floor for people to ask some questions, which I hope you 
have been uh, uh, taking a few minutes to do that. Um, I would like to, to see which one of the panelists would like to uh, answer um, about what are the challenges that um, you are facing when you're trying to push for active, active collaboration between all those different initiatives that are coming that you're seeing on oh, innovation here and innovation there. Oh, they should be working together. And how, how what, what sort of things do you, add from Google and a, as a private sector foundation sponsorship kind of thing that you're doing, and uh, from CEDA as a as a government agency, how, how what what sort of methodologies you use to foster that collaboration? That would be great to know. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, one thing is, of course, that we are trying to to find methods of of bringing people together, uh, both both uh, for direct collaborations, uh, maybe for partners that uh, we already have support to, uh, but also to find different forums uh, where, where people can meet and, and with, with just the meeting and, and, uh, and uh, uh, that could bring collaboration together. Uh, for example, we have uh, Stockholm Internet Forum uh, for two years now, uh, which is a forum for for discussing uh, democratic issues and uh, freedom of expression on the internet, uh, which brings together around 400 people each year uh, to to discuss these issues uh, in. And in last year's uh, Stockholm Internet Forum, we also had a, a, a summit for for developers, uh, where we brought uh, developers from from uh, south and and north uh, to to sit together for for a few days to to see what ideas they are working on and how how. Uh, how they can build networks for for more more enabling uh, people in, in both groups. Uh, I stop there. I think. I think the one aspect um, that you already mentioned that is very true is the need to partner to do all of these activities and. At Google, we partner with a lot of different constituencies in, in all of the activities that Marco and I mentioned. I think one example is the Alliance for Affordable Internet is a, already a 30-plus member organization, including civil society members, other companies. And the country of Sweden is one of the members. Um, and that, that's really important. Um, in other aspects that, that we do, we may partner more locally. So for instance, in some of the tech hubs that we support, uh, many other local um, businesses um, and, and some global businesses too are also supporters of those tech hubs and they help put on the contest there. They help mentor um, entrepreneurs. So it's not something that, I can, that can be done by one organization alone. Yes, if, if I may add that the, if there is some, you know, we describe a lot of different activities on all, in uh, very different fields, but if there is something that is a trade union of, between all of them, is uh, the need of collaborating with the local constituencies and uh, in a multi-stakeholder way. So really including both the institution, the industry, and, and the civil society in, in these initiatives. Uh, yes, I have a, a question. I, I, I want to know uh, which which uh, which are the key, the key elements that, they, that, that uh, as, uh, uh, somebody who is trying to apply for for funds or trying to to get to to fund his his project. What 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 are the key elements that you uh, identified to for funding this kind of project? What are the, the, the key elements that you are seeking? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it depends on um, which mechanism of funding, and I know it can be confusing because Google does so many different things. But for instance, the global impact challenges that Marco mentioned are specifically looking for nonprofits that are using technology in a really innovative way for what they are trying to solve. So for instance, we don't. Um, 
those awards aren't done by sector, you know, but health, education, they can be any sector, but specifically looking for very innovative uses of technology. Um, in contests that we do, then it really depends on the contest. So, for instance, we have pure coding contests where we're really looking for um, amazing developers. Um, and it, and the, the contest normally involves solving problems use, using um, computer programming or they can be marketing contests where there the skill is around um, a small business or entrepreneurs coming together and putting together a really nice marketing campaign. So it, it sort of depends on, um, on the program. And on, on the other initiatives that I mentioned that focused on, on bringing online small and medium enterprises, for example, in this case we were really, really open to all the different sectors and and to the whole community of the entrepreneurs. So not only to the one that are focused on, on new technology, but also uh, we were thinking specifically according to the different region and specificities of the different region to people that is trying to, for example, bring, put, bring online their family business in, in fields that are completely very, very traditional, like tourism, like manufacturing. We had, uh, we had a donkey farm, uh, a farm selling donkey milk, a product made with donkey milk from Belgium all over the world. We had uh, 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 a small firm selling worms from UK in, in all the world, not mentioning all the great projects uh, uh, and ideas from developing countries. So in this case, it was, was very general, also because in this case, more than uh, supporting these activities uh, f from a financial point of view, like on, on some of the initiatives that Jennifer has mentioned, that we were more providing them the tools, the knowledge, and, and the information that they need in order to really uh, consider the opportunity of going online. And then the last question before I open it to the, to the floor, we have 15 minutes for questions from the floor, is about, um, well, we, everybody that is, has been ever involved in deploying or implementing any innovation or not so innovative initiatives but that are actually needed in the community have ever heard of the word sustainability. You have to become sustainable and you have to demonstrate that you can carry on. And so I would, like, I would be very interested to, to understand how the CETA, Swedish government, sees sustainability and how they partner to help build that capacity and what Google thinks about that as well. No, but that, that is very important. Uh, I mean, you can just look at uh, many big companies now within in the sectors like Facebook or Twitter, how has been become very big, but now uh, when they are looking into long terms and sustainability, they, they uh, have to struggle. Uh, but, but, and it's the same thing with, with working, working with this type of support. We need to find sustainable solutions. Uh, and it's always easier to do that in the beginning of the project than in the end of the project. Uh, because in the beginning we we can come in with with funds and to support the uh, to, uh, the project or program, but but we won't do that for eternity. Uh, we need to find find solutions uh, that could sustain the program itself. Uh, and I think one way one very good way of, of looking to sustainability is to to solution on real problems. Uh, it's quite often that that especially with with new techniques and uh, new new technologies that that you find very interesting solutions. But the question is is that an, uh, a real a real problem that uh, needs to find a solution is: is this a pl problem that that uh, people every day uh, are struggling with? Uh, so I think that is one cornerstone, and and of course, uh, being a, a working working in the area that I do, we also of course have to look at uh, empowerment in general but also empowerment for poor people. 
specific, and that is a very important aspect of the work we are doing. When we think of sustainability, I think there's a, a couple of things. It's, it's absolutely essential. Um, we provide training um, and mentorship. I think that's one way to help sustainability. Um, the tools for entrepreneurs so that they can build their businesses. Um, some of one thing that Jens mentioned that I agree with is connections. So some of the events and trainings we hold, it's not just, the purpose isn't just to learn what we may be training about, but actually connect um, entrepreneurs and students to their, to their local internet community so that they can help each other. And then the last thing, Jens, that you mentioned that I really could not agree more about is the relevancy. So a lot of our programs, while they may seem global, are actually very local. So for instance, Marco mentioned the getting your businesses online. We do that at, at a local level, um, or some of the, the trainings I mentioned, those are then done around the world. Um, because then you'll find that the solutions pop up from the local community for the issues that they have, rather than um, you know, like a global contest to try to solve someone else's problem. That doesn't tend to work as well. Um, the, the entrepreneurs in, in that area know the best about what kind of solutions to come up with. Maybe if, if I can add uh, from this point of view, I would like to mention something that we have done in Spain for, uh, for um, support also the, the, the fight against youth unemployment. Uh, we, uh, we work together with university, local university, on massive open online course in order to make uh, this, uh, training, uh, uh, this training content available for, for all uh, the people that could be interested, not only the ones that were following the trainings at the university, but also the ones that could not travel and so c could follow this in a remote. So again, is knowing, uh, building a knowledge that can be shared is, is very important in order to make this initiative sustainable. Thank you, Marco. Now the floor is open uh, for questions. Um, the lady at the back first. Thank you. Uh, my name is Amparo Vallivian. I work for the World Bank. And uh, I want to give a little bit of context for my question. I'm trying to uh, be very brief. Um, we have recently launched a global partnership called Open Data for Development. Uh, which aims to uh, uh, build a coalition of all the institutions that are supporting developing countries with their open data initiatives. And uh, we have uh, in, entrusted the Open Knowledge Foundation and the Open Data Institute to spearhead the partnership, and we've given them a grant of $1.2 million for the first year. Our financial contribution is going to be for three years, and hopefully after that the partnership will take a life of its own. Uh, within this partnership, there is a list of activities that we are uh, doing, and one of them has to do with the creation of a library of uh, open database applications that can travel across borders. Uh, so the idea is that if you have an open data application that solves a development problem in one country, you shouldn't need to do an apps competition and recreate the wheel in other countries. If the app is really good, then you should be able to deploy it and replicate it in other countries. So the key uh, element for us uh, in this activity line is uh, replicability. So the question is whether Google and the Swedish corporation or other presence in the room would like to help us, collaborate with us in this partnership, in this uh, activity or others. We can for sure exchange our content information. We are looking to this uh, this uh, proposal also with our local team that can be more interested to it. So unless unless you have already a contact with with us, we will happy to exchange content information and to take it uh, offline. Just uh, to answer uh, to your comment, uh, just as part of the Seed Alliance, one of the things that we are looking at uh, is at the collaboration between the programs that are part of the Seed Alliance and trying to find out that if innovations that are proposed in Latin America are applicable or replicable in, in the Pacific or the Caribbean 
or in Africa and try to find out those connections. And by having the winners here in, in uh, Bali, is the start, so it's like following up, having them in a meeting that is relevant to the work that they are doing and facilitating the connections with people like you, so, and, and, you know, and the rest of us. Uh, it would be really, it, it is really interesting, and it's basically taking the next step on uh, knowing that really we can't do it all by ourselves and that we can't reinvent the wheel all the time. So as part of the Sea Alliance, one of the, the main um, initiatives is to generate those bridges between the regions. And uh, we are collaborating not only between how, how the winners might be able to collaborate between each other, but us as grants programs as well on how we administer the funds, on how we run the, the, the processes, trying to streamline so it, it, all the administrative costs are reduced and we are able to give more funding away. Um, so I guess Everyone in the table has different approaches to the to the issue, um, but uh, I think we all agree that collaboration is active. Collaboration is is is, is key to the to the um, to the problem. So the, there was a gentleman in the second row. If you want to ask your question. Good afternoon, uh, Dan McGarry from the Pacific Institute of Public Policy. Um, I just want to make one quick, but rather large recommendation to you. The biggest challenge that I've seen in uh, working as I do with uh, many developing and even least developed countries is uh, the challenge for developers is just getting paid. It's really that simple. Um, I, I'll note that developers in most Pacific Island countries can't buy or sell on either the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, or uh, n numerous other platforms. Um, it's a naughty problem, K-N-O-T-T-Y. It's an extremely difficult um, nut to crack. And that's why institutional support from donor agencies uh, and other, uh, other institutions, uh, the World Bank included, I might add, um, is, is critical. And I think innovation coming from leaders such as Google can really help to take you know a useful sort of engineering approach to bypassing the bottlenecks um, and and just smoothing the path but if you do nothing else in the next two years find a way for developers to get paid and you'll see a, an incredible blossoming of activity uh, I can just comment on on I can comment also on the open open data and open source uh, discussion also. I think uh, open data is something that is very important for the Swedish government, uh, both in, in uh, being open in what we are doing and uh, how we are using our resources to, to, to work with, with development, but also uh, in, in the support we are, are giving to, to emphasize on, on open data and, and look into if open source is an, is an uh, option in, in the case we are working with. Uh, and, and what were I going to say about, <laughs> I, sorry I forgot my, yeah, uh, uh, I leave that and come back when I, my answer is <laughs> coming back. So. Dan, thanks for that comment and I, I definitely agree. Um, as you can imagine, payments and financial systems are a very complex issue, um, but it is something that Google is working on. Um, in the meantime, as we work through some of those complex issues, what I mentioned about connecting entrepreneurs locally has really helped in finding, helping them find other sources um, to bring their apps or their businesses um, to their local community so that they can find sustainable support. No, but, but uh, I think that is one, well, one very important aspect and we are of course uh, trying a lot to, to find different way of uh, giving entrepreneurs uh, how they should work, both in, in uh, training people to, to think think business-wise, but also trying to work with structures. Usually uh, 
within countries, but also also of course on 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 global level. But but to to make structure more more uh, friendly for for entrepreneurs and and uh, and uh, businesses to to work. So that is one of the aspects that Sweden is emphasis very very much on. And we have a last question from the floor, the gentleman at the front. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. I would like to go quickly. I'm Farel from Benin, and uh, my question or my intervention will just go to Google. And uh, I just want to know if here it's possible to have some technical uh, contact uh, uh, with Google, uh, because uh, in our country they are, the Google Maps is so out to date, and sometimes I and my research team would like to update some information, but we do not know who to contact and how to do it properly in order that uh, in our country it come up to date. And uh, the second one is uh, about our project. Uh, we have a lot of projects in the domain of mobile health and most of them are localization based services. And that's why it's critical for us to have a Google map that is up to date. And uh, one of them is uh, if I'm asking net, an e-commerce solution that will allow anybody or any patient to find the closest pharmacy within its area and try to find if there is a pharmacy that has a list of products they need and buy and be delivered at time. But for some medicine that are critical, we would like to track on time and know where uh, the products are in the way of delivery. So I think that uh, so critical that uh, if you can have some contact for that. Uh, uh, phone is okay, but I think technical assistance will be better for us in order to have a more efficient project. Thank you. I, I think it, it's important to take uh, offline uh, this conversation to understand exactly what is the concern. If it it's more a problem of the, the maps, so the maps are not updated in terms of imagery, or if it's a problem of uh, the, the geolocalization data. And in this case, probably there are some workaround, but we need to verify if uh, the, the, all the functionality of um, Google Maps are, are available in, in, in your country. So let, let's take five minutes to talk about that later. Um, we have run two out of time. Uh, the, there is a next uh, session coming up. Um, so I really appreciate all the questions. I'm sorry I didn't have uh, time to include the other, the other hands in the room that were raising. Um, thank you very much to all our panelists. And if you can leave your cards, <laughs> and we can maybe hang out at the outside, outside of the room so we have the chance to exchange that information, it would be great. This is the place to make those connections. Thank you very much for coming.